I don't know if I can tell. Okay, uh, thank you, John, so much. And um, uh, besides you thanking everyone who, um, who helped organize and plan and, and run this event, I, I really wanna thank you for all the work that you did. And uh, it seemed like usually our meetings happened during uh, John's lunch because <laughs> he was always, almost always late coming to our meetings because he had to go out and grab some lunch. But, um, but anyway, I wanna thank you. I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen and um, see if we can get this to work. Here we go. So hopefully everyone can see uh, my slide and that's purple and let me get going. So anyway, so hey everyone, <laughs> it is so nice to see you all. Okay, I know I can't actually really see you. This is, we're in this virtual world but I know you're all out there. And this is just such a great opportunity for us to connect and uh, regroup and have hope that soon we'll be able to meet in person again. But also it gives us an opportunity to connect with people who aren't able to uh, attend our summits and conferences. And so hopefully going forward that we'll be able to um, maybe do some of these virtual events too. So I'm going to make sure that I don't run over. And so for the next uh, 15 minutes, I'm going to talk about uh, what the foundation does. And um, Ed Mass is also going to join me for um, a following 15 minutes and talking about uh, what we're doing in our technology and, and software development group. So here we go. So uh, we do get questions still, like, are you like, just like the Linux Foundation, uh, what does the foundation do? Who works for the foundation? So um, I'm gonna answer these questions. Founded back in March, 20, uh, 2000. And so we're actually over uh, 21 years old and um, we are a 501c3, which means here in the U.S. that we're a, uh, a public charity for the, um, you know, for the public good. And uh, we're, uh, so actually to compare against uh, other foundations like the Linux Foundation, which is a good example, just because they're so well known and, and so big, um, they are a 501c6. And the difference is, is that they're a trade association. And so their whole purpose is to support companies, which is totally fine. Uh, we uh, support both, actually. Uh, we're based here in Boulder, Colorado. That's where I am. And, uh, but most of the team is based all over the world. We're 100% funded by donations. And we are separate from the FreeBSD project. And, but our whole purpose is to support the project and the community and uh, stepping in to advocate for FreeBSD to do software development, really to step in to um, help fill critical needs of the project. So these are like the six main areas that we support. And um, I'm not gonna go into each one of the, these, but uh, we will cover, Ed will cover what they're doing in the software development world. Um, here, we support summits and events and meetups, uh, yeah, just like this and the one that we supported back in uh, November that John had mentioned that was a vendor summit. Uh, we plan on maybe hosting an in-person or hybrid type of summit again, at the end of the year. And then hopefully uh, we're planning something in person uh, uh, next summer, so 2022. Um, we, I'll talk about what we're doing for education, legal, we support uh, FreeBSD IP and step in when uh, the core has uh, legal questions as well as advocacy. So speaking of advocacy, here's a list of things that we've been doing and continue to do and we'll also expand in many of these areas. So we do give presentations all over the world and we do encourage to people from the community to also talk about what, you know, what you're doing, what you're interested in. And um, um, uh, the next thing is, and, and we'll also help you too, uh, if you need any help. And uh, we 
uh, produced the FreeBSD Journal. And uh, I'll talk about that too. We introduced the FreeBSD Fridays series uh, a year ago, and we've given 16 talks so far, and um, all of those are recorded, and I'll show you where to find that. Um, summits, like I mentioned, we've been writing up more blog posts and uh, promoting work uh, that's been done within the FreeBSD project, as well as the work that we've been funding. And we've actually been approached a lot more in the last few years on from uh, journalists to give interviews for other uh, technical publications. We've also connected them with folks within the community. And for 20. Where we'll help provide content for university college level uh, operating system courses. So we're currently in the research stage working with different professors around the world. And um, actually, I want to go back. Well, here, I'll continue really quick. Um, but here's other areas that we do support. We have folks on security team, cluster admin, uh, continuous integration. We actually are administrating the GSOC program this year and, and previous years, as well as we have team members on the core team as well as we work closely with the core team uh, to support their needs. And, um, and actually that's where we're informed by, you know, what are those critical needs within the project? I'm gonna go back really quick, cause I think, here we go, this is the team. And I just wanted to show everyone, um, you know, who, who is working for the foundation. Some of these folks are part-time and um, some are full-time. I would say more than half are full-time. And I won't go into what everyone does because we don't have a lot of time here. But, um, but you know, and we do a lot of advocacy and that advocacy work is for the project. And so we have a very small team that supports that. Uh, Ed's group is growing. That's actually where we're focusing a lot of our funding this year. And so um, I'm really pleased that we just added um, Joseph Mingren as our project coordinator and he'll be working, he's working part-time for us currently and then he'll join full-time in a few months. Uh, same with Andy Turner, he just joined us uh, full time, which is really exciting, as well as uh, the rest of the team and um, and and um, and Ed and Mark both joined us um, officially full time as employees, which is really exciting. Uh, Brad Davis, most of you probably know him. Um, he's our uh, he joined us part time to support our our IT, but also to help. Um, coordinate efforts between the foundation and cluster admin to help uh, get the hardware and support that they need. And uh, then you've probably met Lauren online as far as any, like our, she's our frontline person and helps with travel grants and, and all sorts of things. And then Greg is with us part-time and he does uh, most of our tech or a lot of our technical writing. So let me go forward here and uh, here's, uh, a graph of what our income, uh, which is basically donations that we take in versus our expenses. And it's been growing over the years and um, uh, from, from close to the start. And we, currently our budget this year is 2 million and um, about 1.1 million will go directly to operating system improvements. Uh, the rest goes, a lot of it goes to advocacy, education, and support within the project, like purchasing hardware, things like that. So what now what I would like to do is give you a tour of our website. And the whole reason why I want to do this is because I want to show you um, how you can get help and how you can find information. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, stop share. So you should see me back here and then I'm gonna share, I know there's probably a better way to do this, but um, I'm gonna share um, find it. Okay, if I switch to this tab, what I'm hoping is that I am sharing um, our website. And so if someone, if if someone on our team, if you could just confirm that, um, actually what I'll do is I will close that. And so hopefully you see our website. And um, so what I wanna do is, uh, like I said, is give you a tour so you can find out all the information and resources that we have here to 
um, help you in what you're, you want to do with FreeBSD. So first, I'm going to take you to our resources page. And so just if you watch me navigate, and you can always ask later too. Um, so we have FreeBSD resources. And uh, we've been providing this just to help make it easier to either get started with FreeBSD or to get started with what you're wanting to do. So it starts from having these how-to guides here and from most basic running FreeBSD on VirtualBox to over here uh, contributing to FreeBSD as a programmer. Most of these are current. If they're not, it's uh, they just haven't been updated to 13.0 yet, but they're pretty close. And we're, uh, can, we're trying to uh, continue to um, update these. We also have a few video guides that we've been doing. And then as you go down, if you're interested in running your own install fast, like at a meetup or at uh, your school, then we have um, how-to guides here on how to do that with a guide or guides on, you know, how, uh, what's, you know, what are the steps you should follow for doing that? We've been doing this for a few years now, so, um, so we've been refining that. And then down here, we have what we call community re resources. That uh, also provide videos and blogs and webinars and things like that. And, um, and here, and so here's the link to our FreeBSD Fridays, and then the office hours is provided by, okay, so I heard that I'm stuck here. I am having some internet issues here. Um, so, okay, but it looks like I'm okay, it, but sorry about that. I don't know why that's happening, but I did want to highlight there's uh, two companies who've stepped in over um, within the last couple of years, and um, who have stepped in to do FreeBSD development and support for uh, commercial users out there. And it really highlights that there is a need for this as well as a growth in FreeBSD. So the next thing I wanna show you is um, under our work that we do have a lot of resources that um, you could, that's available to you. Say you're going to an event and you wanna hand out stickers or a poster or talk about, well, we have a lot of old stuff here too, but basically it's a repository for, um, for literature, for content that you could hand out at meetups or conferences. Next, I wanna go over our journal. And, um, you know, it's probably like right in front of me, uh, FreeBSD journal. There we go. Um, we pro we uh, published this professionally produced magazine journal with lots of uh, really good articles on uh, different areas of FreeBSD and it's free. And so you can click here to access the latest issue. Um, if you wanna see previous issues, you go here and you can find out um, if there's a, subject you're interested in, you see the table of contents, and you could click on an article, and it'll take you directly there. And we will be putting these in a PDF form too. And then going back, I just wanted to highlight that, um, we're, well, the uh, journal is always looking for writers. So if you want to write for a professionally produced magazine, uh, then contact uh, Jay Maurer at this URL. Okay, next, uh, you have a project that you're interested in doing, you can go to propose a project. And you can find out information about how to write a uh, um, proposal and uh, submit it to us. And most of the time when we get it, we go back to you. We have, we have a um, reviewing committee and we'll typically have questions and we'll work with you and, um, and refine that, help you refine that uh, proposal. And then you just submit it here. To proposals at freebsdfoundation.org. Um, next, I want to, I'm not exactly sure how I'm doing on time, so let me check that. Okay. Um, let's go up here. And uh, oh, I know, I want to show you about uh, projects that we've supported or that we're currently funding. Oh, here you can find out events coming up. But what we do on our homepage, we have our featured projects. 
And then, but you could view all of our projects. So what are we currently funding? So we'll say in progress, as well as what we have funded in the past. And so almost all those projects are listed on this page. Uh, there are a few that we're currently funding that haven't been added yet, and we're gonna do that soon. Uh, let's see here. Um, and here's actually submission guidelines. This is the more in-depth explanation on um, uh, how to write Talk about our team. So I did show you the org, but here's another way to see you know, who's doing what and what we look like, which in a virtual world, um, that's, it's really nice. And so our team members are here. And then we have a board of directors. And uh, so we have a page that shows who is currently on our board. We do have our annual board meeting next week. And so um, that's when we have elections for uh, new board members. And so anyway, you could see uh, who's on our board. Uh, it's a global community, as well as a lot of these folks are hands on. Um, and so they know what's going on within the project. And their whole purpose is to govern the foundation. And then last, I want to go over uh, donors. And so we do, we really want to show our appreciation for donors. And so we have two pa different pages. One is for a corporate donors, and we do refer to them as partners, sort of informal term. And, um, and so we list them here with their logos. And we have what's called a partner program. And so if you're a corporation and you want to donate, then you can go to our partnership program. And it talks about uh, what you get for different levels of donations. And, um, and we do this because we want to um, be able to support our corporate partners too. And so we help promote what they're doing as well as providing them um, support. And support usually is uh, connecting them with the appropriate people within the project or talking about what's going on in the project as well as, you know, what are you doing with FreeBSD? What are your pain points? What are your challenges? And understanding that. And then finally, um, going back to the donor page here, uh, we also have our individual um, and smaller corporate uh, donors listed here. And so it's really just to uh, give a shout out and recognition to these folks who are supporting our efforts. Because like what I said earlier is we are 100% funded by donations. So we really count on this. So um, I think that's um, all I'm gonna cover right now. If you have questions, um, I will be attending the hallway track various times and you can always post questions here. Actually, I do see a question. Um, and oh, actually, Anne could probably help me with this. Will the journal also be published as EPUB? And I think we are. So I'm just going to say that I think that we are doing that. And we'll make sure. Uh, OK. Yes, we are. <laughs> Thank you. I'm jumping in. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Anne. <laughs> That's one awesome thing about these uh, virtual um, conferences. So anyway, um, I think that's it for me. And again, I uh, thank you everyone for joining. Thank you, the organization committee and, um, and the foundation too for uh, sponsoring this, this event. And next, I'm going to hand this off to Ed so he can talk about what we're doing in our technology group. It's probably trying to get set up here. All right. Thanks, Deb. Uh, as Deb said, I'm going to give a bit of a whirlwind tour um, of the the roadmap that the foundation's technical staff is uh, is planning on for the next uh, uh, six months to a year. Um, 
I've got 15 minutes, so I'm not going to be able to go into a lot of detail, um, but I want to give kind of a high level view of, of what we're looking at and um, uh, offer an opportunity or uh, uh, not during this, this session, um, but uh, leave a, a little trail for people to, to offer more feedback and uh, advice and such uh, in the future. So as Deb mentioned, uh, we've grown quite a bit in the technology group um, of the foundation over the last, um, well, really over the last last year um, significantly. We've been doing funded project work within the foundation for uh, about a decade or so, um, but largely speaking early on, we funded individual project grants um, only. And over, uh, over time, we've grown quite a bit to bring on internal staff uh, to take on larger and longer term projects, in addition to continuing to fund um, project uh, individual grants. And we've still been doing quite a few of those. So when we started this year, we had three full-time and two part-time uh, staff members. And as Deb mentioned, we've brought on quite a few new people uh, who've, uh, who have started or um, are are starting now to to ramp up what uh, what sort of work we can uh, we can do. So here's a, a view, high level view of the themes, uh, the, the high level themes that we've identified for focus uh, of the foundation's um, internal staff, and we get the the feedback on what's important for us to take on from talking to companies who are using FreeBSD, from discussions with the core team, uh, from feedback. From conferences such as, uh, you know, BSD Can um, uh, and the Developer Summit um, in person when we've run it, um, we we typically host a uh, the project hosts a, a 11, 12, 13 uh, planning session, and uh, we have one coming up in this this summit later on, and we collect information from those sorts of things um, to identify areas of of interest. And one of the criteria that we use. Uh, we use for determining what we're going to take on is that largely speaking we want to try and fill in the gaps that aren't being addressed within the broader community or the downstream world um, so when we find areas that are not being addressed um, and are a good match to our staff capability uh, those, those are the sorts of things we want to take on so these are the, the four broad themes that we are focusing on at the moment uh, commodity server desktop and end user toolkit and appliance and containerization. So broadly speaking, uh, commodity server, we're talking about a few different items in here and I'll get uh, go through them uh, individually briefly. The darker green ones are items that are uh, committed or in progress and the lighter green um, are somewhat more speculative or under investigation. So tier one CPU support, uh, something that we put a lot of ongoing operational effort into. So this is just general bug fixes, performance improvements, um, uh, support for new uh, features and in instruction set architecture um, across tier one C, uh, CPU. So historically that was x86 improvements um, and I'll get to ARM in just a second, uh, but also we, we've been putting a lot of work into security um, from foundation uh, staff members. So uh, Mark and myself have spent a, a bunch of effort um, funded by the foundation on uh, fixes for security advisories um, and, and helping the, um, the security team. Uh, so you know, we have um, the community, uh, FreeSD community puts a lot of effort into the security team. Gordon and Philip um, do a lot of work um, making sure that advisories get out and are triaged appropriately and whatnot. And then uh, Mark and I have also spent a lot of effort uh, addressing security advisories, um, the pre preparing patches and such. Um, we've done work on proactive vulnerability mitigations and uh, Mark under the foundation uh, has also done quite a lot of work on syscaller uh, coverage guided, kernel, kernel co code coverage guided fuzzing um, to identify bugs in the kernel and, and address them. And that will continue. Uh, next item is ARM64 as tier one. So this is something that uh, has been sort of growing in importance for quite a while. Um, Andy Turner started the FreeBSD porting effort um, almost uh, almost ten years ago or so. Um, 
in mid uh, 20, 2015, 2016, um, the foundation funded Andy and uh, semi half with support from Cavium and ARM uh, to really kind of bolster the effort on ARM64 FreeBSD. Um, the, the little timeline here, the Thunder X, Cavium Thunder X uh, CPU on the left there from 2016, that was our first reference platform for FreeBSD ARM64. Um, and then uh, the Ampere EMAG is the next one on the list there. Um, we have a number of EMAG systems now in the FreeBSD cluster that act as um, build, uh, package build services our primary use right now, but um, we have a number of systems um, in our production, uh, in a production capacity as uh, ARM64, for FreeBSD ARM64 now. Um, the next one is the um, uh, AWS, uh, the, the actual CPU behind the AWS uh, Graviton instances. And then um, as I think folks are aware, Apple um, is using uh, their own ARM CPU in current generation uh, laptops and um, uh, desktops. So um, I think really what I wanted to just demonstrate here is that there's been a, a, a very large and increasing um, level of support in the overall ARM ecosystem. And um, this year uh, with FreeBSD 13, the FreeBSD core team has de declared that ARM 64 will be a tier one architecture in, in FreeBSD. So this means that uh, there's a number of tier one guarantees that we make for, um, uh, for architectures that are tier one. Uh, we have security, uh, FreeBSD update for security advisories, we provide uh, binary, uh, binary objects, uh, binary installation, uh, binary packages, um, installer images and such. Um, but some of the other things that the foundation is specifically going to look at for supporting ARM64 as tier one is things like language run, uh, runtime. So making sure that languages of, of interest uh, work well on ARM64 um, and, and then ex extending out developer tools, um, supporting ARM64 specific uh, ISA extensions um, and just sort of general usability and functionality of the platform, making sure that um, it's, it's sort of effectively we want it to just work. Uh, next item on the list, um, we've got uh, CI and release artifacts. So uh, Lee Wen, who works for the foundation, uh, does much of the work for FreeBSD's own self hosted uh, CI. We're looking at both FreeBSD and third-party hosted CI for FreeBSD itself. Um, so the third part, by third party, I mean things like Cirrus CI, um, which allows us to build and test uh, FreeBSD um, using uh, uh, SAAS CI services, but also looking at bolstering uh, CI support for third-party projects. So things like LLVM, for example, making sure that we have uh, full a full set of, of CI runners for FreeBSD for those, those third-party platforms to make sure that things continue to work well. And we wanna make sure that anything we produce uh, under this is available and usable by downstreams who wanna set up their own uh, CI infrastructure. Uh, very brief item here on VM scalability. We've been looking at potentially continuing some work um, on SMR that Jeff Roberson started last year uh, next item, uh, end user, so desktop and laptop focused. Um, we've, we funded last year, uh, Emmanuel Vado to work on the DRM, uh, graphics stack, and we'll take another look at more DRM work potentially in the future. Um, but right now Bjorn, uh, Bjorn Zeep has continued working on Wi-Fi, um, bringing the IWL drivers, um, bringing up IWL, so a port of the BSD license driver or dual license driver that's in the Linux, uh, in the Linux kernel to, uh, to use the Linux KPI layer and run it, um, run it on for BSD. Uh, so let me just go to this one. Um, so basically, yes, bringing um, uh, support for newer Intel Wi-Fi chips uh, to FreeBSD via the dual license driver from Linux um, as well using the same approach for some other uh, uh, drivers, other devices that are supported by 
do a licensed Linux drivers. Uh, and then just continuing, um, continuing on uh, fleshing out 802.11 AC and later, uh, and we're investigating um, work on uh, additional parts of the Wi-Fi stack. Um, for the graphic stack, uh, we're investigating supporting um, additional work uh, if, if necessary on um, moving forward to later Linux uh, LTS releases. Uh, again, using the same Linux KPI approach that has been used in the past. Um, Thunderbolt 3 and USB 4, uh, we had some potential community, uh, some uh, work in progress from the FreeBSD community, um, but it's unclear at this point uh, if this will come to fruition or not. So this might become a, an RFP. Um, uh, we definitely need, uh, we're gonna need uh, support for, for these uh, moving forward. And for uh, ports and packages um, under the, the end user focusing focused uh, effort, um, we're evaluating supporting package base um, and seeing what we can do to help uh, bring it to, uh, to a fully supported. Uh, state and then finally, um, I have a co-op student working for me this term, who's doing a bit of an uh, investigation and prototyping um, with potential uh, um, uh, new avenues for the the FreeBSD installer. Uh, we've uh, we've done some work on the debugger uh, and expect to do additional work on um, debugging and later performance tooling. Um, and so the debugger, uh, more at systems we funded to do uh, ARM64 support and a, a number of general um, uh, general user land improvements. Um, and with Clang LLVM 10, uh, LLDB is in pretty good shape on FreeBSD. Um, the one really large outstanding item is that we don't have kernel debugging support in LLDB yet. And so we're, we're working on um, evaluating adding uh, adding that and then we'll look at performance uh, performance tooling uh, uh, shortly after this and then finally um, as far as uh, uh, containers uh, containerization has been identified as an important uh, item to look at so um, the foundation is is spending some effort on uh, researching and um, looking at some uh, proof of concepts and, and such um, right now to see what uh, what we can contribute to that uh, uh, to, cont to containerization on FreeBSD, and I think that's sort of um, the amount of, of time I have. So what I would like to to do is is um, have people think about these sorts of things and uh, provide feedback directly to me or uh, via the core team or in the FreeBSD um, sessions that we or the the uh, release sessions that we host um, uh, that are, are part of the, the summits um, and help uh, identify areas that need to be added to this list that are um, gaps gaps in the in the development road uh, general development ecosystem that the foundation should help fill in or items that are on this list right now that um, that folks think are uh, perhaps not as um, as high priority as they should be, uh, or are too high priority, that sort of thing. Um, but uh, with that, uh, thanks for, for listening. So thanks, Ed and Deb. Uh, so for now, we're going to have our first break for the day, and we'll be back in about 10 minutes or so. And our next talk is going to be Warner Losh talking about his project called Camcorder. So we'll see you in about 10 minutes.